Uh, my name is Alberto Broggi. I'm from the University of Parma, Italy, this lab, I'm, and I'm professor of uh, computer engineering there. Uh, we originally started working on um, uh, driver assistance systems, and we started uh, maybe 15 or more years ago. Uh, we developed a few uh, applications like the you know, lane detection, uh, obstacle detection, and uh, pedestrian detection thing. And then we moved uh, towards the autonomous driving. Uh, we put everything together uh, and, and tried to see if we could have some vehicle drive by itself using all these systems. And what we did so far is that we, uh, in 1998, um, we, we drove with, our, with one of our vehicles uh, uh, throughout Italy. Uh, it was uh, 2,000 kilometers, more than 2,000 kilometers driven uh, in automatic way. Uh, we called it the Mille Miglia in Automatico, meaning 1,000 miles in automatic mode. And that was back in 1998. So we had, uh, at that time, we had 94% of autonomous driving. So meaning that the other 6% uh, was driven by a human. So it was a test and we were not sure what was going to happen. So there was someone sitting in the vehicle and you know, able to uh, intervene whenever there was the, 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 the necessity. And after a few years, we also tried the uh, DARPA challenges. Um, the DARPA challenges were a, a race between uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, the first one <clears throat> in, 90, in uh, 2004, uh, well, we tried that, but no one uh, was you know, able to finish it. Uh, the second one, 2005, uh, we were very uh, uh, were lucky that we were able to get qualified for the race, and we finished the race. So actually, in 2005, uh, our vehicle was able to traverse uh, the Mojave Desert uh, and was, I guess, 200 kilometers, 130 miles of completely autonomous maneuvering. Actually, there was no one on board uh, at that time. And then we also tried with this um, uh, urban challenge, 2007. Uh, that, in that case, we were not lucky enough because we were qualified for the race. We started the race, and during the race, actually, we had to stop the vehicle because after one hour and a half of uh, autonomous driving, the vehicle had some problems with uh, one of our PCs, and so we had to stop it. And after that, was, there were no more challenges. DARPA challenges, so we are now designing our own challenge right now. Actually, um, the University of Parma, uh, I started a group at the University of Parma, which is called VizLab, and um, right now we have a spin-off company. So we're trying to transfer the technology and the solutions that we developed so far uh, to the market. So this is a you know, new step uh, forward. In a month, we will be leaving uh, uh, from Italy, Parma, and we're going to reach, hopefully, uh, Shanghai in China after three months of uh, autonomous driving and uh, without any human intervention on the vehicles. Um, so this is a huge, huge challenge because uh, we were going to face um, different scenarios, different uh, traffic patterns, uh, uh, different weather. Um, so we will have to face anything, anything. Uh, so from, from mountains uh, to, to flat areas, from traffic, uh, you know, anything. And th th in this case, we will stress our systems a lot. So both on the uh, hardware point of view and software point of view. So I expect that in the end, regardless of the percentage of autonomous driving, I mean, I hope in 100%, but I'm not sure because it's a huge event. But in the end, we will have recorded everything. So we will have about one, one terabyte per day, so about 100 terabytes of data uh, that we will be able to pr process again and again and again in laboratory. So we will be able to traverse the Asia multiple times. Uh, and we will be able to intervene if the system has some failures. Uh, and we would like to find these failures. Uh, and we will may maybe we will also design new systems thanks to this data. So it will be a huge, huge database that maybe we can also share with other research centers. Also. Yeah, actually we do have four vehicles. Um, we are using two of them, and two of them will be as backups. Uh, but two of them will be on the road at every time. 
And, uh, you know, there are some areas which are not mapped. So there are no maps around. So some remote areas in Siberia and, uh, you know, the, the western part of China. I mean, you, you, if you Google that, you will not f be able to find any map. So, you know, the way in which we solve this problem is that we would have one vehicle in front which would be partly manned and partly autonomous. So that would be you know, maybe 90% or 80% autonomous, but sometimes uh, there will be people there uh, design the route. So whether to go left or right or what, what to do and, and find the route. And the second vehicle will be 100% autonomous. So on the second vehicle, there will be just uh, passengers. And um, what will the second vehicle do is that if the first vehicle is visible, then the second one would follow it. But if the first vehicle is not visible, so maybe it's behind the curve or uh, there's another vehicle in between or maybe it's too far away. So the first vehicle will be sending GPS data to the second one. So that will be creating a rough idea of a map. Uh, so a rough idea of the route so that the second vehicle with local sensing will be able to, you know, uh, manage the situation and maybe avoid obstacles or, uh, you, know, you know, keep away from, from ditches or berms or whatever. So you have local sensing that is able to refine the, your position on the roads. And this idea of, of, a, of a rough uh, indication of the route given by the first vehicle. You're right. Actually, um, safety comes first. So there will be passengers on the vehicle, but they will have a joystick and they can intervene at any time. So it's a test, it's not a demonstration. I call it a test because it's real test. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen. So maybe that we need to intervene because we haven't been thinking about that particular uh, condition or, or situation. So, and, and the real value in doing this is that we will be able to find out some situation in which the system is not working. So this is a real value in doing this. And uh, I mean, sure, I mean, we, we need to be sure that nothing happens. So people sitting in the back would have their joystick and can intervene and stop the vehicle at any time. So, and we would be logging also that. So at the end, we would have a percentage of autonomous driving that hopefully will be 100%, but I'm not sure. And what, do you, what is the name of this test? It's VIAC, it's VisLab Intercontinental Autonomous Challenge. It's our own challenge, so nobody else will, will, will participate with us, so it's just ours, so, yeah. You know, um, I'm not sure when, but I'm sure that in few years, uh, maybe 20, 50, 100, I don't know, but someday vehicles will be unmanned. I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't be this way. I mean, so if you, if you think about the, the, the uh, the situation, it would be very convenient for everybody. So everybody can be riding safely and uh, very efficiently. And so that's, that's, I think, will be our future. Uh, I don't know when, but someday it will happen. So we are kind of paving the road to that. So even if car makers right now are not uh, investing in this, because they are more interested in, in, in products that can be sold in, in, in a very short amount of time, um, Someone needs to be taking care about this uh, research. So autonomous driving needs to be researched. So what we're doing right now, thanks to uh, some um, money coming from the European uh, Commission, uh, we are trying to, yes, to push, push the technology to the limit and see what we can reach of, uh, from, from, this, uh, from this point of view. Well, uh, actually from 2007, which was the last, uh, last uh, DARPA challenge, uh, there hasn't been much everywhere in the world. I mean, due to maybe the crisis that stopped a lot of projects uh, and stopped investing in this kind of uh, very risky research. So there has been not much around. Um, I know about uh, Berkeley, which is now trying to do some uh, rally race with their cars. Uh, which is going to happen if you, in a few months, I guess. Um, and there's us from the other side of the ocean uh, trying to do this, uh, this, uh, this challenge. But actually, these are the only things that I've, I'm, I'm, I know about. We are actually, this is our main research, which we are uh, you know, now uh, 
pushing forward uh, to the autonomous driving, but actually the main research is, uh, is driver assistance. So we have been dealing with these uh, uh, pedestrian detection systems and uh, you know, lane departure warning systems. Uh, so yeah, it's mainly computer vision, but uh, you know, we are a computer vision laboratory, so I'm, I'm really biased on this. Um, but there are situations which computer vision cannot handle. So we, Such as? Uh, for example, I mean, think about a gray obstacle on a gray background. No way. So there's no way that you can really, really solve 100% of the situations. So there's no way. Uh, fog, I mean, you will not be able to see very uh, deeply into the fog. So there are situations which are not handled by vision. I mean, there might be, there might be a low number of situations, so maybe you can forget about them. Uh, but definitely there are. So what we're doing now is to try to fuse together different technologies. And we're mainly focusing on putting some other sensors together with vision, and the other sensor are actually lasers. Um, we have some nice experience with um, laser devices. I'm not talking about laser scanners, because a laser scanner is something that moves, so you have a mechanical part in the sensor that scans around and spins around, you know, 10 hertz, so it's kind of fast. So, you know, the, the trend is that we, we try to remove the mechanical parts from the, from the car and, and replace that with electronics, and this should be the other way around. So you are putting some more mechanical stuff into the electronic, which is, I, I mean, I, I don't really like that, that stuff. So what I'm talking about uh, regarding this laser is that direct laser pointers, so laser beams, so fixed ones. And in that case, uh, I think that this situation could be handled by laser beams, fixed beams, plus vision. We have also other, other sensors, and actually um, we, have, we have one vehicle, our main test vehicle, uh, which has a lot of technology on it. Uh, we, have, uh, we have different lasers, laser beams, laser scanners, uh, radars, and uh, everything. Um, every single sensor has its own applicability, uh, failures and, and problems. So the, one of the projects that we have in our lab is that we have a big vehicle with a lot of technology and we try to partition this technology and find out just the little uh, applications in which you can use just one sensor and the other technology only so you can partition everything and understand if you can solve the problem with just a subset of the sensors. Yeah, And for example, for the um, this uh, cross Asia trip, um, we have, I mentioned we have two vehicles and um, they are identical vehicles because of the, you know, problems in setting them up. So they are ex exactly identical, but we would be using different sensors. So we would be using a set of sensors for the first one, so more uh, uh, advanced and more expensive, and a different set for the second one, which will be a kind of uh, exploitable vehicle, readily exploitable vehicle, so something that you can use downtown when you have to, you know, collect trash or move goods between, you know, shops. Uh, so that would be the real demonstration. So the second one would be the demonstration. Uh, first one would be our, uh, you know, experimental vehicle. And actually, during the whole trip, we would have this live satellite uh, coverage, so we would be able to broadcast everything which is happening on the vehicle uh, to our website, so we can uh, have everyone witness uh, what's going to happen on the, on the vehicles. Okay. You know, these these companies have, uh, um, I mean, they need to sell, so yeah, they are really focus. focused on on selling a product. Yeah. So their horizon is you know five years. It, it's different uh, because we. Our main car is a is a is a um, Asian car, but for this trip uh, we are uh, using electric cars. Uh, so it's actually it's a challenge into the challenge, uh, because we have electric cars. Uh, so we will be covering the whole trip on uh, let's say green energy, plus all the sensing, the processing, and the actuation is powered by a solar panel on top of the car. So. We decoupled the propulsion, which is on, runs on batteries, the original batteries, and the, the, the autonomous pilot, 
which is powered by the solar panel, so with uh, with electric with the uh, solar energy. And the cars are Piaggio cars. Uh, uh, Piaggio is, is renowned for the scooters. Uh, it's an Italian company, um, but they also produce these um, small size vans, little little vans, and they are electric. So it was a perfect uh, you know match uh, for our challenge. We have a trek. Actually, we do have generators on, oh, okay. on our vehicle. So <laughs> because you know originally we tried to see if it was possible to do everything on solar power, but current technology is not. You know, you can't do that. Take We're starting place. in July, the end of July, ending up in October, and we will be reaching the World Expo in Shanghai. Sure. And actually, we should be arriving by the 26th of October, and the Expo is going to finish on the, and the on the 31st. So we, we might have, if we have some delay, we might not make it, but you know, we will try our best to do it. That was really interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.